What's good? Y'all know who it is and y'all know what it is. It's your boy, Matthew Shaq. And uh, I got a story to tell, man. Um, we all know that uh, Tommy Tiny Lister, who played Debo in Friday, passed away yesterday at the age of 62. And uh, we're hearing that from his manager and other people that it may be COVID related. Um, but we lost a very entertaining um, individual in Tommy Tiny Lister, man. We know him uh, from being a wrestler. We know him from being Zeus. Uh, we know him definitely from being Debo, man. Debo is an iconic one of the most iconic movie villains uh, in the history of film, as far as I'm concerned, man. He's up there, okay? Um, but being here in L.A. and coming to L.A. for many years, uh, due to the fact I'm in entertainment business, I ran into uh, Tiny a few times, Um and uh, every time I ran into him, man, the brother was always, he might have been big, he might have been imposing, but he was the nicest cat you would ever meet, man. He always spoke. He, you didn't have to worry about him, uh, you know, going Hollywood or not speaking to you or, you know, because you'd be surprised how many uh, of, of the celebrities that you guys uh, follow and know and love uh, in regards to their personas on television, film, radio, sports. Them motherfuckers is really uh, not the nicest people you'd ever want to meet and shit, okay? Just to keep it straight up and a hundred and keep it a buck. A lot of them, man, they, they ain't even worth speaking to and shit, okay? But Tiny wasn't that kind of cat. Um, and I'm going to just go to the story that I want to tell, man. Um, I seen him many times after, Okay. But the first time I ever ran in a tiny lister, man, was in 1996. I was still living in the Bay Area, but I would come to L.A. every month uh, for music related situations. I'd have meetings. I'd be down here working on projects or whatever. So when I got to L.A., I always hit the hottest spot at the time. And during that time, uh, by UCLA over in Westwood in the in in the. Uh, you know, in that area, there was a bar and a restaurant that was a, a rooftop bar. I can't think of the name of it right now, but uh, I went there, man, because a friend of mine uh, was promoting it. And, you know, like Shaq, you come into town, man, you got to come to the spot. So went to the spot, man, and uh, had a little trouble getting in, man, because for some odd reason, I thought it was just going to be like a regular little get down with, you know, regular L.A. party. But there was a lot of people, a lot of celebrities, man, that showed up that night. I don't know why. Shit, I just came to town, went to the hotel, changed my clothes and, and went to the spot and I couldn't get in. I'm like, shit, what the fuck's going on, man? I thought this was just a little soiree, but it wound up being so lit that. They were like, nah, man, you know, this person, that person, who you know, and whatever. So I was like, man, I had to run my mouth, man, to get in there, man. I'm like, look, I came all the way out here, blah, blah, blah. I know homie. Everybody knows homie, whatever. So anyway, got in the party, man. Party was lit, man. Like I said, it was rooftop. You could look over entire uh, uh, Westwood, uh, West L.A. area, man. It was beautiful, man. DJ. Of course, beautiful women walking around, man, celebrity sections and all of that type of shit. So I'm walking around, man. I'm by myself because I'm solo dolo like I was 99% of the time, you know. So I'm walking around in there, man. I see my partner, man. He's like, hey, man, you know, uh, you know, what took you so long? I'm like, man, shit, man, don't start that shit, man. You heard I was outside, motherfucker. But you, you didn't come get a nigga and all of that. He's like, no, nah, I didn't know whatever. He's laughing or whatever, but. Uh, went and said, man, they take care of you, get the bar, get you a drink or whatever, man. Here's some drink tickets and shit. You know, I, I got to do my thug thizzle. I'll holler at you. I was like, all right, cool. You gave me some drink tickets. That solves that shit. So I'm walking around, man, and I start walking to the bar, man. And the biggest cat at the bar was Tiny Lister, man. 
big as shit. He was clean, man. If you got, if those of us have seen Tiny out, man, Tiny was always suited and booted, man. He was clean, man. Had him a dope ass suit and shit. Had him a had him had him a, a bolo hat on. Was clean. You know what I'm saying? Uh, and he was at the bar. And I walked up to the bar. I was, hey, what's up, Tiny? And he's like, he's like, you know, hey, what's up, man? How you doing, brother? You know, didn't know him personally. I ain't gonna act like I knew him and shit. But anytime I see him, I said, what's up, Tiny? He'd always say, what's up, man? And, and, and he was cool. So when I started ordering my drink, man, I heard a familiar voice, man. Since Tiny was so big, I, did, I couldn't see who he was next to. You know what I'm saying? But I heard a familiar voice, man. And when I looked, leaned forward, leaned forward on the bar to kind of just, you know, just kind of see who I, who I was hearing. Guess who it was, man? Wearing an all white suit, white white dress shirt, white suit, white white pocket square, white white uh 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 pants, white shoes, all the way down, white big ass gold chain. Tupac Shakur, man. He was at the bar with Pac, and Pac and him were talking black and forth and stuff, man. And I just looked over and I was like, okay. Now, me, I, I don't jock motherfuckers, but I was like, OK, I, I see Pac and, and, and I've seen Pac a few other times before that. OK, so I said, I'll just wait. You know, it's like all good. You know, if I see if I run into him, I'll say what's up to him, because that's what you do, man. You don't jock dudes. You don't walk up on cats jocking them and shit. OK, so I was like, OK, Pac was there talking, talking to Tiny and they was at the bar, man. Nobody guards. Pac's back was turned to away from facing the bartender both of those cats backs was turned okay so anybody could have i could have easily walked up not that i would have but it, it was easy to walk up on them and this was a time when you were hearing all this stuff going on with death row and all the time stuff was going on with Pac and his contract and all this kind of stuff and he he didn't look like he was worried at all man he nobody was even in the vicinity bothering him or none of that shit so needless to say, I didn't see them, man, because I got I, I, I started hooking up and meeting people and doing what I did or whatnot, man, and wound up leaving and shit. Funny thing happened, man. The next month. Pop got shot in Vegas and was and was gone. So that was out of the three times I had seen Pop in that year. That was the last time. That I saw Pac, but the last time I saw Tupac alive, he was talking to Tiny Lister, a.k.a. Debo. And they was chopping it up, having drinks, chilling like anybody else, man. So I just wanted to make my little story known and say, hey, man, when you see these people out, you see folks out, man, you know, that might be the last time anybody sees them in a public setting. And I just hope. That Tiny's family and his friends, uh, you know, are going to find comfort in this holiday season without their loved one, man. We all got loved ones and we all know that if they're not here during the holidays, it's hard. But it's especially hard when you lose a loved one during the holidays, man. Nothing is worse than that. All right, man. Love all y'all out there, man. You guys be safe, man. Don't think it won't happen to you, man, because it may. Salute. Thank you.